Need fast, cheap, reliable MUD coins? Go to MMOXP.com for the cheapest coins on the market. And use discount code MONEYSHOT for an additional 5% off your next order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the Madden cheese as always. Got a defensive tip video for you today used in gameplay. I'm going to show you guys a four-step defensive process that I pretty much use every single player, every single drive uh, to make myself a better defensive player and will ultimately make you a better defensive player if you stick to these four principles. It's very simple. I'm going to show you guys a couple of different uh, series, a couple different drives from a couple different games uh, so that you can see how consistent this is and how easy it is. Before I get into this video, though, if you guys want to help me out, scroll down a little bit hit the like button like shares comments all that stuff really helps out in my videos so if you want to show support you can show support that way other than that if you like what you see make sure to hit the subscribe button to stick around and other than that let's get right into the video so starting off on defense uh for these four things that i'm going to describe are things that you can see all right in front of you right now and they're all things you never know what your offensive opponent's going to do but if you do these four things you can basically eliminate 90 percent of what your opponent can do uh, which makes it very easy to uh to, to cover what's left the first thing you want to do is you want to take away space pre-snap now i run a lot of man coverage i'm running a man blitz you can see these safeties are playing really far off and out of position so the first thing that i'm going to want to do is i'm going to want to close that distance i want to get the dbs closer to their assignments i want to make sure there's not too much leverage inside Inside or outside because if they have too much space inside or outside they're going to get open to that area so if, an, if, a, if a receiver has outside leverage or too much space like this safety is on this receiver if he hits a flat route it's open right away so you don't want that same thing goes for zones if you're running zones and you have a receiver say you have a trip set and one of the receivers is open right off the line he's typically going to be open right away and he's going to be an instant read for an easy play so you want to take away space in these scenarios the second thing would be where's the uh, action most likely to be and that's real simple there's three receivers four including the running back on the right side not to mention the open side of the field the larger side of the field is on the right side so based off of that alone i mean i got like an 80 percent chance that the play is going to happen on that side of the field so i have to cover that side of the field so those are two of the three pre-snap indicators the third indicator is once the play starts because now I have new information. On this play, the running back goes out on a route. Since I know that my personal defense has six guys coming after the quarterback, I now know that I have an advantage in that area. Which brings me to my next step. Know your strengths and know your weaknesses of your defense. You don't know what your opponent's going to run, but you know what your defense is. So you really have to know what you have to protect against. On this particular play, I know that the strength is that I have one more blitzer than he has a blocker to pick up. So I know he's got to get rid of the ball quickly. So my weakness is going to be anything that beats man quickly drags slants uh in routes anything that's an instant open against man one way or the other is something that i have to protect against on this particular play i gave up the running back because it was just a flat route so ultimately it's a reduced amount of damage if he would have threw it there as i would have faith that my guys would basically come and make the tackle to reduce the amount of yards he would get which brings up the last step of this process and that's the situation now he's in a second and long that's a situation the score is seven nothing he's down even this early in the game people play differently when they're behind so that's a situation so you know these are things that are all indicators of what your opponent's going to do next so ultimately you have to be aware of them so second and 18 like i said i know in this scenario probably has to pass uh based off the fact that he has a, a lot of distance to gain he's not going to want to get down two scores that's just not how people play they play from behind he's down seven nothing he's going to play like he's down seven nothing so he gets a good chunk there third and six now we're going right back to the mid blitz to try to trick him a little bit with the cover one on the last play uh, but ultimately we're going to go ahead we're going to hit him with that one more time because it was successful uh, and we know we have the same uh the same offensive look i mean he has the same formation he's been running i mean the running back is obviously uh, uh open in the backfield a lot of times out of his formation and then you look at these situation ones against third and six um he can really do just about anything there's not a lot of indicators as far as that goes other than the fact that he's mostly been passing so i man aligned my user one more time and then i remember that that running back was wide open last time and he probably was upset that he didn't hit that particular receiver that plus the the fact that that would be a weakness on my defense if i didn't cover the running back again and we get an easy interception so you can see how easy it is to put this system in play so new game different opponent my first thing once again we're going to basically align every time uh you can see we shifted the defense this time because for run defense if this was an inside zone that would be the best shift that i could make to make this the best defense against a run play he does not run the ball though so ultimately we go through the same process we want to eliminate you know the open side of the fields to the left so we're going to give ourselves a little bit of a 
hook zone in that direction to take away any plays that way. The short side of the field's a little bit less of an issue, even though there's three wide receivers over there. The play would most likely have to include crossing routes, which it does. Now, on the first play, I could take away this short route. He's got to look, but ultimately, I know where my help is. I know that I have the hook zone there. So I'm going to let that go. I'm going to drop into the deeper route, which was also getting open. And now you can see my opponent really has nowhere to go. He's basically going to have to run, tries to play maker and make a play, but the man coverage is all over that. We knock the ball out. Nope. So going through this process, second down, second and 10, we're going to continue with the man coverage for the most part because, to me, man coverage is the way to go. And I'm going to do the exact same setup. I mean, I don't have to change anything because the formation looks the exact same. I won't know until he runs the play. It's actually the exact same play that he runs. But ultimately, I got my shift. I take away any run possibilities. I got my uh, hook zone to take away any pass possibilities. And it's the exact same play. So you can see here, I mean, he throws it to the drag once he's completely out of bounds and he doesn't even get the catch. That's typically why people don't throw to the short side of the field based off of the fact that they typically run out of bounds. But this actually happened because he had the, you know, I had the hook zone basically taking it away until he got to that point. So now we're on a third and 10. Once again, this is a much better indicator of the situation. He's got to get 10 yards. Another indicator is the score. It's a tie game. So he's not going to give me the ball. He's not going to go for it on fourth down necessarily from zone 30. So I basically know I have to get a stop here, uh, a relatively uh, decent stop, and he's going to punt the ball away. So based off of that fact, we're going to go, we're going to hard flat to that side again. This time we have three receivers over there. So I know I need an additional defender in that area. So I have my flat to that side, and then I also give myself a little bit of help on the short side with a hook. Uh, and then ultimately, it's the exact same play one more time, although I'm all over it once again. He, nope. he flipped it because of the short side of the field. Like I said, people don't want to run plays in the short side of the field because they run out of space, and it ultimately becomes an extra defender, which really stops them. If you can see he flips it, still don't work out, has to punt away. So, new game, new series. Uh, once again, I mean, this time my opponent's playing with a lead, which is a completely separate indicator. He's running the ball a lot. I basically pre-snap, I pinch the defensive line, I have outside contained with the outside linebackers, I have inside run lanes stuffed up with the defensive line. He tries to pitch it out, pretty much gets a good animation. I mean, that really wasn't, I had that snuffed out. But he gets good animation, gets a couple more yards than he probably should have. Uh, and this particular opponent, like I said, is playing with the lead. So people that play with the lead typically run the ball more. They play a little bit safer. That lead will come in handy this entire drive with as far as my pre-snap reads go. So once again, we pinch our defensive line, take away anything. He's getting a lot of uh, really good fall forward and break tackle animations. But ultimately, I feel like I'm stuffing this run based off of that fact. Third and one, like I said, heavy indicator that based on the fact that he's once again playing with the lead, that he's more than likely going to play it safe and run the ball here. That plus one additional indicator is also that it's second quarter, 151 left. Based off of that, he's probably going to want to run clock a little bit so he can run the clock down and score before he gives me the ball back. So all these indicators are right in front of you. These are all things that you can see at any point in time in the game to let you know what your opponent's going to do. Now, on the very next play, uh, I don't know if it's because I've been stuffing the run pretty well. I pinched my defensive front once again. Um, you know, it's, it's to the point where if he runs an inside zone, there's really nothing there. Uh, he actually goes into a pass play, and then once again, I cover the running back, which would have been a weakness on my defense if I didn't cover it. Nope. And sure enough, we get the stop so fourth and one he's actually going to go for it once again now this is a, a, a huge indicator based off the fact that he's had more success on this drive running the ball than he has passing the ball that I'm pretty sure that this next play is going to be the run so I go ahead I pinch my I make my lineman I pinch my defense once again to take away the inside run because he only needs a yard so the last adjustment I'm gonna make is I'm gonna guess run I'm gonna guess run up the middle which in this scenario makes the most sense he's beginning a lot of fall forward animation so I want to stuff that and sure enough we make the stop we get a good play right off the edge uh, so that's it that's the video if you guys want to see more videos like this more defensive tip videos like this or offensive tip videos like this let me know in the comment section with the like button other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below